إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Here now then, we're on the chapter from Kitab al-Tawheed, Bab al-Tasammi biqadi al-Qudah, wa nahwihi. The chapter regarding naming with the name the judge of judges, qadi al-Qudah, and names that are similar to that. Names that are similar to that. What is the ruling on having these types of names? A Shaykh Al Fawzan he says, "هذا الباب مشابه للباب الذي قبله." This chapter is similar to the chapter before it. باب من سب الدهر فقد آذى الله. The chapter that we did, the one who curses time, then he has harmed Allah. لأن الباب الذي قبله فيه النهي عن مسبة الده because the previous chapter it had in it a prohibition from cursing time وهذا الباب في النهي عن التسمي بالأسماء الضخمة التي فيها العظمة التي لا تليق إلا بالله عز وجل. <coughs> This chapter now will mention the prohibition of having names that have a great deal of grandeur in them. Names that have a great deal of grandeur in them. Huge, magnificent names indicating grand status in them. Those types of names are not permissible to have because names of that type of grandeur, they are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for the people. Then after this chapter we will see there is another chapter which comes, Bab Ihtiram Asma'illah. The chapter regarding respecting the names of Allah. That will be next. So these two chapters now are regarding this particular issue. So the title says, At-Tasammi Biqadi Al-Qudah Wa Nahwe To name yourselves the judge of judges. The judge of judges. Or names similar to that. Kull Usmin فيه تعظيم شديد للمخلوق من الألقاب والأسماء التي فيها التعظيم الذي لا يليق إلا بالله سبحانه وتعالى مثل ملك الأملاك ملك الأملاك وسيد السادات وما أشبه ذلك من الألقاب الضخمة التي يتلقب أو يتسمى بها بعض الجبابرة أو المستكبرين. All of these types of grand names, all of these grand names, where there is a great deal of this grandeur in them, names like the King of Kings and the Leader of Leaders, these types of names that indicate this huge blown out of proportion type of grandness in them in respect to humans, blown out of proportion grandness in respect to humans, then they are not suitable to be named with. And it is the arrogant and the haughty and the proud who name themselves with those types of names, that I am the judge of all judges, I am the leader of all leaders, the king of all kings, This type of naming is not correct. 
كل هذا محرم ومن هي عنه all of this type of activity this type of naming is impermissible and prohibited لأن المطلوب من المخلوق التواضع مع الله سبحانه وتعالى because what is required from creation is that they have humility humbleness modesty before their creator to have humility humbleness and modesty before their creator and there is no modesty and humbleness naming yourself the king of kings the judge of judges so this is not correct to name yourselves with such names وتجنب ما فيه تزكية للنفس أو تعظيم للنفس and a person should stay away from names and titles that bring about grandness to yourself. You should stay away from these types of names and titles that bring about grandness to yourself. And they raise you and they give you self-recommendation. Those types of names should not be used. لِأَنَّ هَذَا يَحْمِلْ عَلَى الْكِبَرِ وَالْعِجَابِ Because those types of names will cause to bring about arrogance and self-amazement within a person. Arrogance and self-amazement within a person. وَخُرُوجُ الْإِنسَانَ عَنْ طَوْرِهِ وَوَضْعِهِ الصَّحِيحِ And it will cause a person to exit from the correct framework, the correct frame of mind that he should be in as a slave and servant of Allah. So you should not name yourselves and term yourselves with grand names. Term yourselves and name yourselves with names that have a great degree of recommendation in for yourself. Names that... Bring about status and grandeur for yourself. Recommendation for yourself. These types of names are not suitable. These types of nicknames, as you say, titles that you have of that nature should not be used. Because that type of thing will bring about self-amazement in an individual. And they will bring about arrogance and pride in an individual. Nowadays, generally speaking, when you think about this as a whole, it is something that many people <coughs> have fallen into. Many people have fallen into this trap of making their titles and their names grand. So you see people who have barely studied a year or two here and there. A couple of books here, a couple of books over there maybe a few months or a year or two abroad, and they come back and now they are known as, they have to be titled as, on all the YouTube videos and all of the social media, they are now a sheikh. You cannot just say the name of the person anymore. You have to say they are a sheikh. And this is generally talking about how the people have blown themselves out of proportion with the types of titles they give themselves, generally speaking. You hear people sheikh, you hear people mufti, you hear people with all types of titles and names that they are not deserving of whatsoever. They have not qualified for such titles. Even the scholars who are certainly qualified for these titles, sheikh and mufti and titles of this nature, even the scholars, they will still not be pleased that the people term them and refer to them with these titles. There are instances from the likes of a Sheikh Al-Albani, a Sheikh Al-Fawzan and others where they have said, I am not a Sheikh, don't call me Sheikh, I am just a student of knowledge. Some of them even said, Tawaylib, from their humbleness, that I am only a small student of knowledge. This is the humbleness of the scholars, the modesty of the scholars, <coughs> something that you do not find in the youth of today. The youth, they gladly want to take the title sheikh. 
and they want to be known as Sheikh, and the YouTube videos that are uploaded with their permission, with their channels, with their people, will upload them as Sheikh such and such. And maybe this person is barely 25 years old, he's barely learnt anything for a couple of years here and there, but he has to be titled as Sheikh. And this is something that the likes of Al-Maghrib and those types of individuals brought about. And they spread in a widespread manner. All of their speakers, as ignorant as they may be, some of their speakers not even qualified in knowledge, they are more qualified as comedians, they have to be termed as sheikh. Everybody is a sheikh. And now the other youth as well, you see them doing the same type of thing. Young people on YouTube and it is sheikh such and such, sheikh such and such. The people have blown themselves out of proportion into this grandness, into these great titles for themselves that they are not deserving of. And you hear all types of things, all types of things for these titles that they make up for themselves. Some of them nowadays coming along from the new ones that we heard recently, titled as Guardian of the Grave of the Prophet wasallam. This is a title. That's clever, thinking out of the box. For the normal titles, Sheikh, Mufti, overused, need something new. So the new one can be a guardian of the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Little do the people know in this country that the students who live in Medina, you could probably not even count how many of them work on that job. Either paid, they pick people, students, to stand near the grave, just to make sure nobody's making dua to the grave, you just tell them, turn around, don't make dua, things like that. Sometimes they will pick certain students, ask who wants to come and do it, they'll pick you, they'll even pay some people to do that, specifically certain shifts. And other students used to go there voluntarily, we used to go there voluntarily. I am guardian of the grave as well, from now on call me that. We all used to go there, stand there, just tell the people don't make dua to the grave, don't uh, do anything funny, People sometimes want to wipe the walls and things like that. You just tell them, don't do these things. It's not allowed to wipe the wall. Don't make dua this way. Students used to go there, multiple students. Go there voluntarily, go there uh, because they've asked you to specifically do shifts. Many people. So now people in this country obviously don't know those things. They don't know that all the students, loads of them, they all go there and stand there and do this voluntarily or paid. So now one can come along and say, I am the guardian of the grave of the Prophet And he will be introduced as, or on the YouTube videos, guardian of the grave of the Prophet This is the foolishness, or you could say, this is how they make people fools. They are making fools out of people with these titles and with these names. People who are barely 21, 22 years old, and they are shaykh already, mashaAllah. So, that generally speaking is something that people have exaggerated in. Where everybody is a shaykh now. And they don't know anything about the religion. Some of them, maybe have not even studied Kitab al-Tawheed from the beginning to the end, which most of you are going to do now soon, inshaAllah. Yet they are all shaykhs, and you're not though. This is the reality of the people and how they have gone beyond the boundaries so be very careful with regards to these uh, social media outlets, with Twitter, with Facebook, with YouTube, with all of these mediums, because they are exploited by these fame seekers, they are exploited by these individuals who do not have knowledge of the religion in reality, for their own purposes, for their fame, and the majority of them, in the end, when it comes to it, it's all about selling tickets for their events, it's all about the 20 pound, 30 pound, 50 pound tickets that you have to buy in order to go to their events. So, these, <coughs> these types of affairs, be warned from them and be very careful regarding them. Social media has become a great fitna these days for the people. A person can be absolutely no one, have no knowledge. A few weeks on social media, a few accounts on all of the different sites, and within six months and a year, he's now a sheikh to the people. So be very careful and do not take your knowledge from anybody who comes along in that way. Rather look to where you take your knowledge and from the ones who have that knowledge, 
who have studied, sat with the scholars, the scholars themselves, their students, not anybody who comes along to promote themselves on YouTube and social media. So here, coming back to the topic, regarding these grand titles and names, that it is not suitable and not correct and not permissible for a person to have them, وَكُلُّ هَذَا يُخِلُّ بِعَقِيدَةِ التوحيد. These types of grand names, judge of judges, <coughs> king of kings, titles of this nature, it indicates a deficiency in the tawheed of a person. Indicates a deficiency in the tawheed of a person. Because if he had the grandness of Allah understood in his heart, then he would not desire to have titles for himself with grandness in them. He would recognize that he is a servant of Allah in poverty before Allah. How can he give himself these grand titles? He would recognize that, but he does. If a person does give himself these grand titles, judge of judges, king of kings, indicates a deficiency in his realization of the grandness of Allah, the might and the majesty of Allah, that such names are only deserving of Allah. So for example, here in this chapter it mentions Qadi al Qudah, judge of judges. This name like that is not correct for anyone except Allah. Allah is the judge of judges. He is the one who judges between the people. He is the one that the judgment it returns to. The final judgment is the judgment of Allah. He will judge between all of the people. As it is established in the Aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, مَجِئُ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لِفَصْلِ الْقَضَاءِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend on the day of resurrection to judge between the people. So Allah will make that final judgment between all of the people. Mulukuhum mu'ammatuhum. The kings amongst the people and the general folk amongst the people. Everybody will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulamauhum mu'awamuhum. Whether they are scholars and whether they are common people, all of them will be under the judgment of Allah. So the absolute judgment is only for Allah. So this type of name, judge of judges, is certainly not correct and suitable for any person to have. <coughs> As for a normal judge, then of course you have judges. In the Islamic law courts you have the judge, the qadi. That's okay. The qadi, the judge, he is there, Islamically appointed in the sharia, a judge. Judges between the people in their affairs upon the Islamic laws. That is correct. But the issue here is having these grand names, judge of all judges, and king of kings. That is something in addition that has gone beyond the boundaries. The normal boundary is a judge. He is a judge. He is an Islamic judge. Correct, no problem. But to go beyond the boundary, judge of judges, then that has now gone beyond and transgressed what is permissible. A person could say, for example, that he is the, the, the chairman of the judges. For example, if somebody had the title that this person is the chairman of the judges, no problem. He's the chairman of the judges in that area. All of the judges, they report to him. That is something acceptable. He is the chairman of all of the judges. But when the people go beyond the boundaries with grandness, I am the judge of judges. That indicates grandness now gone beyond the uh, prescribed amounts. Also, it is mentioned in this hadith now, في الصحيح عن أبي هريرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن أخنعس من عند الله رجل تسمى ملك الملك الأملاك لا مالك إلا الله. That the the most the the most hated or disregarded of names. What's the word they use? Abominable. The most abominable of names. The worst. The worst of names. 
As far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned with these names, the worst of names with Allah is that a person says, I am the king of kings. Because in the hadith it says, لا مالك إلا الله There is no owner, king except Allah. So a person comes along and says, I am the king of kings. That is completely incorrect. The, <coughs> the king of kings, the absolute dominion and kingdom is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The absolute kingdom and dominion is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for any other individual. The kings of this world, their dominion and their kingdom is restricted. It is limited. Nobody can claim I am the king of kings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one with the complete dominion, with the complete control, the complete kingdom. As for the kingdom of the kings in this world, it is restricted and limited and finite. It only lasts a certain time, never lasts forever. Even when they die, their kingdom is gone, passes on to the next person after them. So a person cannot name himself that way, the king of kings, the judge of judges. These types of names are not permissible. So in this hadith of Abu Huraira, where it mentions that the worst and the most abominable, abominable of names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of kings. Sufyan mentioned, he carries on to say that Sufyan ibn Uyayna, one of the salaf, he mentioned Shahani Shah. And this is some of the mention from the language of the Persians and it means the king of kings. Shahani Shah, king of kings in the language of Persian or some other language which is not from the Arabic language. Also, fi riwaya aghiyadu ala Allahi yawm al qiyamah wa akhbathuhu. The worst and the most disgusting and the hated of names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most degraded of names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who names himself with these <coughs> types of names and the names that cause the anger of Allah to name yourself the king of kings, the judge of judges. So these types of grand names bringing about this greatness in of yourself and this recommendation for yourself, they are not permissible. These types of names are not permissible. What is required of a person is that he has humbleness, that he has humility and modesty before Allah. So even generally the scholars they say, any name that has tazkiyah within it, then you shouldn't use them. Names that have a self-recommendation in them, you shouldn't use them. Hence some of the scholars they mention these popular names like even Iman. Iman is a name people use often. It is a name used by the people, Iman. Some scholars say it is not suitable because it indicates a recommendation, a self-praise that I am full of Iman. I am a mu'min, I'm full of iman, I'm high levels in iman. That's the meaning it indicates. And what you may infer from that. So some scholars say those types of names or other names which have a self-praise within them, a recommendation within them, a meaning of grandness to that level within them, that you shouldn't use. Of course other scholars may say iman and these names are okay. But generally speaking, a person should try to avoid names that will bring about self-recommendation or grandness. So then we come on to this chapter regarding respecting the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and changing your name due to that. A person may have a name which is not respectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so changing your name from your original name to something which is suitable, is something good to do, if your name was a name that was not suitable to begin with. So the chapter heading is, Bab ihtiram asma illahi ta'ala wa taghyir al-ism min ajli dhalik. Respecting the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and changing a name to maintain that respect for Allah. If your name didn't have that respect, your name wasn't something suitable and correct, then change that. So that you may 
ennoble and honor and respect the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the most beautiful of names. So call upon him via those names. Allah has the most beautiful of names. So call upon Allah via those names. In another ayah, Allah la ilaha illa hu, lahu al asma al husna. That Allah, it is He, there is no deity worthy of worship besides He. He has the most beautiful and perfect of names at the pinnacle of beauty. Similarly, Allah said, قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوِ ادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Whether you call upon Allah or you call upon Ar-Rahman, all of those <coughs> that you call upon, whichever you call upon, they are all from the names of Allah. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many names. And we've studied before <coughs> that the names of Allah <coughs> are not restricted to any particular number. The names of Allah are not restricted to any particular number. It is a mistake which is widespread amongst the people that they think Allah only has 99 names. That is wrong. Allah has more than 99 names. And we cannot restrict the names of Allah to 99 only. There is a famous hadith, Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isma man ahsaha dakhala al-jannah. Allah has 99 names, whoever memorizes them, enumerates them, practices them, will enter paradise. This hadith is authentic, and yes, it mentions 99 names. However, the meaning of the hadith, as the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah from olden times to our time have explained, is not that Allah's names are restricted to 99. It simply means if you memorize and practice and implement 99 of them, then you will have this reward in the hadith. But there are more names than that. And one of the proofs is the hadith of the Prophet wasallam shows that Allah has more than 99 names and we don't know how many more. We don't know the exact figure, but we know there are many other names that we don't know. In the hadith, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak sammayta bihi nafsaka aw anzaltahu fi kitabika. أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك. In this narration, this du'a that the Prophet ﷺ taught for the one who has some grief or concern, that O oh Allah, I ask you with every name that you named yourself with, or that you revealed in your book, or that you taught anyone from your creation, or I call upon you also by the names which you kept in the knowledge of the ins- uh, knowledge of the unseen with you. <coughs> this hadith therefore indicates that there are certain names that Allah has kept in the knowledge of the unseen to Himself. How many are those names that Allah has kept in the knowledge of the unseen to Himself? We don't know. We don't know how many more names Allah has that are in the knowledge of the unseen and we don't know them yet. We don't know how many they are. Therefore, it's impossible for us to put a figure on how many names Allah has. It's impossible because that figure is an unknown figure to us. How many names has Allah kept in His knowledge not told us about yet? We don't know how many. Therefore, it's impossible to put a figure on how many names Allah has overall. So Allah has more than 99 names. So now this chapter says that a person must respect and honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and to change his own name if it was something disrespectful. وَتَغْيِيرُ الْإِسْمِ أَيْ إِذَا سُمِّيَ شَيْءٌ مِّنَ الْمَخْلُقَاتِ بِاسْمِ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ الْخَاصَ بِهِ كَاللَّهِ أَوْ الرَّحْمَانِ أَوْ مَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ الْخَاصَ بِهِ أَلَّتِ لَا يُسَمَّ بِهَا غَيْرُهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ تَغْيِيرُ الْإِسْمِ احْتِرَامًا لِأَسْمَاء If something from the creation, if something from the creation was named with one of the names of Allah, then certainly that has to be changed. If it was named with one of the names that are specific to Allah, then that has to be changed. Like Ar-Rahman, O Allah, these names like that, Ar-Rahman, Allah, 
You cannot name something Ar-Rahman or Allah. So that would have to be changed. Because it would not be respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use the names in this way. <coughs> there is a hadith regarding this. عَنَ بِشُرَيْحِ أَنَّهُ كَانَ يُكْنَ أَبَ الْحَكَمِ فَقَالَ لَهُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَكَمِ وَإِلَيْهِ الْحُكَمِ أَبُو شُرَيْحِ هَانِ إِبْنُ يَزِيدَ الْكِنْدِ one of the companions, and he narrated from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His kunya used to be Abu al-Hakam. Al-Hakam meaning like the judgment and the rulership. Abu al-Hakam. Abu al-Hakam. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this, Abu al-Hakam, the one who judges and the one who makes the, the rulings, and the people returned to him for their judgments and their rulings. That's what this name indicates, Al-Hakam. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this, he said to him, Allah is Al-Hakam. Allah is the one who the judgments are returned to and he makes the judgments. And all of the rulings are returned to him and he makes the rulings. That is in the Quran. فَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءِ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ If you dispute about anything, then return it to Allah and His Messenger. So the judgments and the rulings are returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Abu al-Hakam, he replied to the Prophet ﷺ and said, إِنَّ قَوْمِ إِذَا اخْتَلَفُوا فِي شَيْءٍ أَتَوْنِي فَحَكَمْتُ بَيْنَهُمْ He said, my people, where I live in my area, whenever they dispute over anything, they always come to me. And I make the judgment and the ruling between them. فَرَضِيَا كِلَ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ and both parties, whenever these instances arise, when these issues arise, both parties, they come, whoever those both parties are. And when I rule, everybody's always happy with it. They take my judgment and they take my ruling for it. فقال, so the Prophet ﷺ said, so Abu al-Hakam was explaining the reason why he's got this kunya. Abu al-Hakam, the one who makes the ruling and the judgment. He said, in my people where I live, if they dispute, they always come to me and I judge and they're always happy with my judgment. Hence, Abu al-Hakam. So the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا أَحْسَنَ هَذَا That's very good. That's good. Meaning that you judge between the people with justice and goodness and they accept your ruling and the problems are sorted out. That's good. مَا أَحْسَنَ هَذَا But then the Prophet ﷺ said, <coughs> even though Abu al-Hakam now has explained that he didn't make the kunya for himself. He's just explained to the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't make the kunya for himself. It was the people who made that kunya for him. They were the ones who used to come to him all the time and he judges between them and they are happy with his judgments. So they all became, or they all started calling him Abu al-Hakam, the one who judges. So it wasn't him himself who made this kunya. It was the people who had made this kunya for him and that's what he explained to the Prophet ﷺ. Because they used to dispute and they were happy with his judgment. So they started calling him Abu al-Hakam, the one who makes the judgments. So the Prophet ﷺ said, that is something good. That is something very nice. That you judge with justice between the people and they accept that. However, that didn't justify having the kunya though. That was all good. That he judged with justice and the people were happy with him. That's all good. But that doesn't justify having the kunya though. Abu al-Hakam, the one who is the judge and the ruler and the one who makes the judgments. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, فَمَا لَكَ مِنَ الْوَلَدِ How many children do you have? What, what children do you have? Abu Shurayh, he said, Abu Al-Hakam, he said, قُلْتُ شُرَيْح وَمُسْلِمْ وَعَبْدُ اللَّهِ He said, I have Shurayh, and I have Muslim, and I have Abdullah. Three. Three kids. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ أَكْبَرُهُمْ the Prophet ﷺ said to him, who is the oldest of them? <coughs> he said, Shureh. My child who is named Shureh, he's the oldest one. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, in that case, Anta Abu Shureh. Your kunya is therefore Abu Shureh from now on. He changed his kunya from Abu Al-Hakam to Abu Shureh. Because Al-Hakam, there isn't respect then. Allah is the one who is the judge. Allah is the one who you return back to for the rulings. And Allah is the one that you return back for the judgments. So it's not suitable for a person, a human, 
to have that name indicating I am the one people return to and make their judgments and uh, I make the rulings. That is for Allah, those types of things. So it isn't respectful to Allah for a person to have that type of name. So here we see that the Prophet ﷺ, to respect the name of Allah, changed the name of this person or the kunya of this person to Abu Shuraih. Also what we can learn from this hadith, that when you, and we've mentioned this before, when you prohibit somebody from doing something, you tell them such and such is not allowed, such and such is impermissible, then ideally you should explain to them what the alternative is. <coughs> you should explain to them what the alternative is. If you're able to do that, then that is the best. Tell somebody X, Y, and Z is haram, but such and such, that is allowed. What you're doing this, that, how you're doing it, it's not right. It's wrong, it's not allowed. But you can do this and that and the other. So to give them the alternative of what is permissible, when you explain to them that these particular actions are impermissible. That is something good that a person should try to do when uh, giving the da'wah to the people and explaining to them something is wrong. Give them the alternative of what is right. Also, we learn from this that it is something recommended and something good that peace is made between people. That if people are arguing over something, fighting between themselves, two people have an issue over some land or whatever it may be, to make the truce between them and to make the unity between them and to remove this uh, uh, hatred that may have occurred between them and this fight and argument that may have occurred between them and to bring about goodness within those people, that is something from the sunnah and it is something good to do. Because when the man said, these people they come and they make me judge and I judge and they're all happy and they are united after that. The Prophet ﷺ was very happy with that. He said, that is good, that is excellent. That you bring together the hearts of the people in this way and you remove these issues they have between themselves. So that is something good. With regards to naming as a whole, naming the newborns, then it is mentioned by the scholars as a general rule of thumb, any name that has a good meaning to it, any name that has a good meaning to it, which isn't resembling and imitating the names of the kuffar, then it's permissible. But there are certain types of names that are better. So for the men, it is known that the best of the names to Allah are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. <coughs> These two names are mentioned particularly. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. Then after that, what are the best of the names? Before that. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman are mentioned as the best of the names for the men. What are the next best of the names? How? All of the names of Allah with Abd put in front. Abdul Ghafoor, Abdul Rahim, Abdul Aziz. All of the Abd names, they are the best. For the men, all of the Abd names are the best next. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman as the best. Then after that, all of the other Abd names. Abdul Aziz, Abdul Ghafoor, Abdul Rahim. All of the other Abd names. Without the Abd, then obviously you cannot name a person with the name with Alif and Lam on it. You cannot say somebody's name is Ar-Rahim. Allah is Ar-Rahim. But certain ones can be used without the alif and lam. For example, Hakim, just as a name, Hakim, Karim, just as a name, Karim. But you can't say Al Karim, then it has to be Abdul Karim, Hakim. But you can't say Al Hakim, then it's got to be Abdul Hakim. So certain names can be used without the Al. But others, generally speaking, they cannot be used at all. 
So those names really what you should do is with the abd, the best of the names or with the abd, abd such and such, abd such and such. Then after that, what are the best of the names? Names of the prophets and messengers. So after Abdullah and Abdurrahman, then all of the other abd names, then the names of the prophets and the messengers. Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Nuh, all of the names of the prophets and the messengers. Muhammad. In fact, when you look at the books of hadith, or the scholars of hadith, when they used to write their books about al-jarh wa ta'adil, books of the biographies of the narrators, huge books, some of them are 60 volumes, 50 volumes, 40 volumes, listing out all of the narrators who narrated the hadith and telling you the rulings and their biographies. When they used to write their books, how did they used to order the index in that book? What was the order that they would give those biographies in the book? Alphabetical order. All of the names beginning with Alif, all of the names beginning with Ba, all of the narrators beginning with Ta, in the order. However, there would always be, or many of the scholars of hadith, what they do at the beginning of the book, before starting with the Alif names, they always used to put in Muhammad. All of the Muhammad names at the beginning. Respect for the Prophet ﷺ. The name Muhammad, all of the narrators with the name Muhammad at the beginning. Then starting off with the Alif and going on. So, names of the Prophets and Messengers, no doubt. After that, what are the best of the names? The Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So Abdullah, Abdurrahman, then all of the other Abd names, then all of the prophets and messengers, then all of the companions, these are the best of the names. Then after that, any other name which has a good meaning to it, and there's no imitation of the disbelievers. All other names which have a good meaning to them, and they aren't imitations of the kuffar, the disbelievers, they are permissible. Those names are permissible. For the women... The best of the names. Amatullah means the servant of Allah. It is the equivalent of Abdullah. But I've never found an evidence to say that it is the best of the names. In meaning it is the equivalent of Abdullah. Amatullah. The female servant of Allah. But Allah A'lam. If there is any proof or evidence saying that Amatullah is the best of the female names. Generally speaking from the female names... The best of them are the names of the female companions. The names of the female companions. And Amatullah is from those good names, no doubt, the servant of Allah, the female servant of Allah. So generally speaking, the female companions' names are good names for girls. And again, any other name which had a good meaning to it and there was no resemblance to the disbelievers, not imitating the names of the kuffar because they sound good or it's fashionable, that type of thing should not be done. But any other name, if it has a good meaning to it, then it's permissible. Even if it wasn't Arabic, it is allowed. Any good names with good meanings, don't have any bad meaning, don't have any self-recommendation in them, then they are permissible. But the best of them are to go with the names of the female companions first. And there are many. There's uh, many names of the female companions. So a person could search for those types of names first. And if anything else with a good meaning, with nothing evil in it, no self-recommendation in it, no imitation of the kuffar within it, then they are permissible names also. That is the end of those two chapters regarding names, and changing your name if it was something bad, to a name that is respectful and good. And there are other narrations in the sunnah also, with that meaning, where the Prophet ﷺ changed the name of certain people. When he discovered what their names were, he changed their names. There are some other ahadith and narrations where that occurred. Besides this one that we mentioned about Abu al-Hakam, Abu Shurih. There are instances where that occurred in the sunnah. So it is a sunnah, it is something good. That if you have a bad name or a meaning which isn't really appropriate and good, to change your name to something suitable. That's where we'll conclude then from those two chapters. Next week's chapter is regarding the person who mocks or belittles the remembrance of Allah from the Qur'an or the Messenger. Mocks or belittles the remembrance of Allah or the Qur'an or the Messenger. 
That is what we'll discuss next week, and that is highly appropriate also. Highly appropriate also when you see the type of da'wah being given by the people these days. The da'wah which you have to put in huge inverted commas. The da'wah with huge inverted commas, because in reality it is not da'wah. These people out there these days, they essentially are mocking. They think it's funny. They think it's a good way of da'wah to the disbelievers and to the people and the Muslims who are not practicing. But the reality is they are making a mockery. They are making a mockery. And it is something from their ignorance that they are doing this because they have not studied with the scholars and they have not learned from the scholars. So you see them coming along and doing da'wah in ways that was never known to the salaf, nor was it ever known to the scholars that came after that, nor is it known to any of the scholars alive today. These styles of da'wah that they come with. And you've seen it from Al-Maghrib, Al-Maghrib Institute and the types of things that they do. They have superhero characters flying around, cartoons that they make, all types of nonsense. So there is a lot of nonsense out there in the name of da'wah, and it is not da'wah. Da'wah which has never been known in that way to any of the scholars past or present, and these people come along with it and say it's da'wah. So inshallah next week we'll discuss this issue of belittling the remembrance of Allah, the Qur'an and the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. If there's any questions we're able to take, we can do it. Otherwise, we'll conclude there. Is there any basis to what a lot of people say that people get a share of the name they are given? Correct. The scholars mention this. Scholars mention it often. Your name has an impact on you. Your name has an impact on it. As they say, it rubs off on you. Your name rubs off on you. So a person who has a name with a bad meaning to it, the scholars say that will rub off on you, on your personality, on your character, the name that you have. Hence, that is one of the reasons they mention. If you've got a name with a bad meaning to it, it will rub off on you, on your character, on your personality. That bad meaning may infiltrate you to a degree. So change your name to something good. They do mention that. So if you have a good name with a good meaning, that will similarly rub off on you and you'll have that goodness in you that your name indicates. Um, see, uh, individually, Allah, I'm not sure about every individual name, whether it's allowed or not. But if the Alif and Lam is taken off, certain ones can be used. Individually, that one or others, Allah, I have to look into. It depends. It depends on whether that is proven as one of the names of Allah. And there is differences amongst the scholars. Some scholars may mention that certain uh, names are from the names of Allah. And if it was, then you can say it. Abdul and that name. But other scholars will say these types are not names of Allah. They are ikhbar anillah. It is an informative piece of information. And that you study in the principles of the names of Allah. The uh, principles regarding the names and attributes of Allah. When is something considered a name of Allah? When is it not? So there are some differences between the scholars. When you look at their books, in the past, some of the scholars found 140 odd different names of Allah. Others only found 100. Some didn't even find 99. There are some scholars who didn't even get to 99. So this all depends on how the implementation of those principles works and whether something can be considered a name of Allah or not. But a person should stick to those that are wide known, well known as the names of Allah. And you put the abd with it and it is a, a good name to have. This one, uh, from what I understand, Allah Ta'ala A'la, is that you shouldn't do it. And it should be Abd. Mm. From what I recall, there was a student with this in the University of Medina who used to have that name, and he changed it. After speaking to some of the people of knowledge regarding it. So perhaps better with that one, to stick with Abd with it. Mm. It's safer always just to stick with Abd. It's a better name, a more beautiful name than making it singled out. In any case, hmm. if someone's got a name and their name you got it resembles a name of the kuffar, should I change it? Yeah, if, if the name is imitation of the kuffar, it resembles the kuffar, 
then that isn't suitable. It isn't suitable to have a name which is from the names that are widespread and known and resembling and an imitation of the kuffar. Change it to something good, with a good meaning, an Islamic meaning, some nice meaning to it, and not to have a name which is from the names that are representative of the disbelievers. Generally speaking, the scholars, they say, if it doesn't have a bad meaning, if it doesn't have a bad meaning to it, it's just a name. And maybe the kuffar use it, maybe other people use it. Then it's allowed to keep it. It's not uh, haram to keep it. But they say it's better if it's a name that it's like that, resembling the kuffar, you change it to something Islamic. There was an individual we used to know at the university, yeah, a revert, and his name was Christian. Christian, it's a name that they have. His name was Christian. And uh, he was a revert, and his uh, Muslim name was Usama. But he hadn't changed it officially on his paperwork. So one of the scholars in class, when he was teaching and doing the register, in the register, his official name, Christian. <laughs> so he read the name out, Christian, and obviously even the sheikh knew Christian, what it means. Nasrani, a Christian in uh, English. And he told him, this isn't suitable. This is a name you have to change. Because that is clearly, blatantly indicating a meaning which isn't good, Christian against Islam, uh, the uh, religion of shirk. So he said to him, that is a name you should change definitely, even on your paperwork, everything, not just Islamically, everybody knows you as Usama. On your paperwork, you should change that name. So names that have a bad meaning, you have to change. But a name that doesn't have any real meaning to it, then they say it's allowed to keep. But it's better to have a Muslim name, or something with a good meaning to it. What about uh, Rahman? They're allowed, as far as I know. Saif rahman the sword of Ar-Rahman. They're allowed. The names are allowed. It is uh, attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's just the issue of uh, self-recommendation. Saif rahman the sword of Allah. You know, sometimes maybe it's uh, bloated somewhat. Kalam al haq MashaAllah. Kalam al haq the speech of truth. So that would be probably something which has a bit too much of a recommendation to have that type of name. Yasin, some of the people of knowledge have mentioned it's not good to have these names from the surahs of the Quran. Taha, Yasin. Some of the scholars, they say it's not uh, advisable. It's not something good to name yourselves with the surahs of the Quran. But again, it's not something that I'm aware of that they say is haram. They say... If you have a kid now, don't choose surahs of the Qur'an, like Yasin, Taha, etc. So we'll leave it there, inshallah, next week at uh, quarter past seven again. We'll continue, inshallah.